The Night's Watch. The Night's Watch is one of the oldest orders in the Seven Kingdoms. It has survived the fall of the kingdoms of the First Men following the Andal invasion and the War of Conquest. The order was founded 8,000 years ago, after the period known as the Long Night. Under cover of an endless night that lasted for a generation, the others invaded from the lands of Always Winter, laying waste to much of Westeros until the others were finally defeated by the Night's Watch at the Battle for the Dawn. After pushing back the threat, the wall was built by Brandon the Builder in order to protect the Seven Kingdoms, should the others ever return. During the Age of Heroes, it was also recorded by the Night's Watch that the Children of the Forest gave them a hundred obsidian daggers every year. But other than the corrupting of the 13th Lord Commander named the Knight's King, attacks by the others never came. Instead, the mo most frequent attacks came from the Wildlings, sometimes led by their kings beyond the wall, and their constant attempts at raiding in the north. Slowly over time, the Night's Watch began to forget its main mission was not to fight against the Wildlings, but against the others. As the years came and went, the purpose of the Watch became less and less obvious, and its manpower decreased more and more, with most of the Seven Kingdoms neglecting the Wall itself. Only the North, particularly the Starks of Winterfell, have the memory of the old days, but even they believe the others are no more than a vague figures in stories told to frighten children. There was once a time when the Night's Watch boasted 19 strong castles along the hundred leagues of the Wall, with over 10,000 men-at-arms between them. Castle Black alone quartered 5,000 fighting men with all their horses, servants, and equipment. The Highborn of the North have traditionally considered it an honour to serve on the Wall. Many younger sons of Northern Lords, low on, low on the line of succession, gladly took the Black. 300 years after Aegon's conquest, only three castles remain in use, and the Night's Watch's numbers have dwindled to fewer than a thousand men. Not only that, but the Night's Watch is now largely made up of misfits of the Seven Kingdoms. Peasants, poachers, rapers, thieves, and bastards. Only a few of the noble and knightly houses south of the Neck have members in the Night's Watch. And most serve because they have fought on the wrong side of a war, or fell afoul of politics. The Night's Watch consists of three orders. Rangers, Builders, and Stewards. All of them are subject to the Lord Commander, and each of the three orders is led by its own official officer, called First Ranger, First Builder, and First Steward. Respectively, these officers are appointed by the Lord Commander himself. Although all Brothers of the Watch stand watch on the wall, the Rangers are the main fighting force, apt at surviving in the wildness and tasked with scouting and patrolling the haunted forests beyond the wall. They are actively defending the wall and riding out to face the Watch's enemies, including the lawless wildlings, as well as the mysterious, inhuman others. The builders are responsible for maintaining the wall, the castles, and the equipment. They provide masons, carpenters, miners, and woodsmen. The stewards are the largest of the three orders. They are responsible for the assortment of critical functions, providing vital day-to-day -day services. They hunt and farm, tend horses, gather firewood, cook meals, make clothing, maintain weapons, and conduct trade with the South bringing back to the Wall any and all supplies needed by the Night's Watch. Like all other members of the Watch, the stewards must be ready to fight at a moment's notice, and they all receive a basic level of combat training. Among the stewards, those with skills in sums or reading or writing must be given specialised tasks as well. Few enough for literates, but the Watch has a purpose for every man. Stewards also serve as attendants and squires for the high officers of the Watch, such as the Lord Commander. In short, the entire administration of the Night's Watch is in the hands of the stewards. The Lord Commander of the Night's Watch is the final authority and oversees the entire order. Any man can rise to this position. A Lord Commander serves in office until the day he dies. When a new Lord Commander is elected by the men of the Watch, it is strongly suggested that that Lord Commander is usually a Ranger. The majority of the officers and leadership of the Watch are pulled from the upper crust of Westeros society. An aristocrat or knighted man is almost guaranteed a position as an officer in the Watch. But there are several brothers that are of common blood as well, such as the senior rangers Quarren the Halfhand, Blaine and Cotter Pike, commander of the East Watch by the Sea, and a baseborn pirate. The Watch is one of the few places in feudal Westeros where a common man can rise and even gain command over knights and lords rising as far as Lord Commander of the Night's Watch. Once upon a time, serving on the wall was an honour and a sign of selfless devotion to duty, with many knights, honourable men and nobles taking the black voluntarily. Today, the Night's Watch is beginning to be seen as the only way to avoid punishment, suitable less for knights now these days than for the lower class of Westeros, with many new recruits being dragged from dungeons by travelling recruiters. Disgraced nobles, bastards, or even the unwanted legitimate offspring of a nobles are encouraged to take the black. 
making many of today's watch a surly and dissatisfied lot. Those who come voluntarily are free to leave during any time of their training, but no man may leave after he has said his vows. Any deserters are sentenced to death. After taking the vows, the men of the night's watch cannot own any land, marry or father children. Men are also encouraged to sever any ties left with their families, if they're lucky enough to have one. The men of the Night's Watch are all in black, a tradition that is earned in the nickname Crows, particularly among the wildlings. Many in the Night's Watch have adopted this term for their own use. They are also called the Black Brothers, and in song they've been called Black Knights of the Wall. Night gathers and now my watch begins. It shall not end until my death. I shall take no wife, hold no lands, father no children. I shall wear no crowns and win no glory. I shall live and die at my post. I am the sword in the darkness, I am the watcher on the walls. I am the fire that burns against the cold, the light that brings the dawn, the horn that wakes the sleepers, the shield that guards the realms of men. I pledge my life and honour to the night's watch, for this night and all the nights to come.